doesn't have education, to enter that first step on the ladder is almost impossible within one time. So what he or she here we are saying is, whatever you do, you will never qualify. And even if you say, I can work for half salary, I may not be that productive, I can work for half salary. The trade union will say, ah, you don't work for half salary, because then you're destroying the entire welfare system. You work only full salary. But before you do that, you need to be productive like anybody else. And you need to be not medium productive, not three quarters productive, 100% productive. You need to be able to, even if you have a very simple job, even if you are behind the cashier in supermarkets, you need to speak languages. You need to be doing the accounting, the computing, the you know, all the things. It's, it's an extremely efficient economy. And every position in this economy requires a lot of skills. If you don't have those skills, go educate yourself. But that's a hard one if you don't speak the language, if you've been educated, if you're illiterate, and you are an adult. It's a long way to go. Some make it, but most do not make it. And the, those families that do not make it cannot make that transition. They get children with parents who have never been any, anywhere near the labor market, who have never been employed, who have really not been part of society. Their kids find it very hard to get into society. And that creates an accumulating problem that we need to solve. But it's not simple because some of the easy mechanisms are incompatible to the welfare system. Uh, I'm from Finland and thank you for your presentation. And Finland is quite similar to Denmark in many ways. We have also high taxes and a big public sector and those kind of things. And very, very uh, high employment. Yeah, yeah, that's different. And then, when I'm listening to your presentation, I'm really surprised because it seems to me that Denmark is paradise and we don't have any problems and everything is going so well. Then you hear the same stories. And in Finland, it's totally the opposite because everything is going bad in Finland and our future is corrupting and, and collapsing and, and, and our economy is doing bad. And, and what's your secret in Denmark? I would love to know. Thanks for your presentation. I'm Morten, I'm from Denmark. Uh, it's industry, in uh, I was just wondering if you could comment a little more on the uh, integration of Denmark into the European family of countries and the, some of the dilemmas we've had in, in Denmark and the discussions on that. Um, I would propose we take just one more, which was here, because, and then we give you the opportunity to bring everything together. I think my uh, question um, is a bit like this, like his. Is this your national narrative that you told us? <laughs> let me, uh, let me, no, I, I, was not, I was not trying to portray a, uh, a society without our conflict and paradoxes and, and, and indeed not a society without threats or problems. We have all of that plentifully. The secret, and I think there is a secret, the secret is that we have been able to build a society with great cohesion. And that has been a major success of ours in the 20th century. And if you listen carefully, and I'm sure you did, I kept referring very much to the 20th century and the situation at the turn of the century, because many of the inherent problems that you are implicitly alluding to uh, have been very visible since the turn of the century. And let me come back to them. I think actually in this sense, in the, in the sense of cohesion, the Scandinavian countries and Finland have a lot in common. Um, it's not that we don't have social differences. It's not that we don't have tensions. We do. But the overwhelming impression of society compared to any other society is one of the issues. And that has made it possible for us to address a number of problems the way I described. So it's not a, 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 a national narrative in that sense. Now, what are the problems? They are very much linked to the same notion. 
can a country maintain cohesion in an open world like the one we're living in? Can we maintain cohesion being increasingly an integral part of the European cooperation? And indeed, many critics of Denmark would ask, what kind of country is it that has national cohesion as a target? Why don't Denmark open itself to the world? So when we say cohesion, we also allude to something that is national cohesion. And that, of course, has strong implications. It's hard to become part of that national cohesion. My point is, and one of the reasons I'm telling this story and has been writing about it, is we have to realize that as we move into a different situation, because the world economy, because the European uh, uh, situation is different, how much of the virtue of cohesion can we, can we protect why open ourselves to the world? And this is, it doesn't have simple answers. Today, the big issue here, like all over uh, Europe, is the, the refugees coming over from Northern Africa to Europe. And uh, we were doing the editorial in the paper I'm editing, which is in the paper today, we did that obviously yesterday, based on the analysis, which is, and this goes directly into the question you are asking. If Europe does not protect itself from mass immigration from the Middle East, in the Middle East, it will change not only Denmark, but Europe. The kind of Europe we are cannot prevail with millions of immigrants every year. It cannot. The welfare system cannot be maintained in that situation. At the same time, and equal to the values on which Europe is built, and indeed the Danish society, cannot be maintained if we get people drowned in the Mediterranean. Why would we say that? So that, that's a real power. So the very values that are underpinning our society cannot survive if we close our borders. But we shouldn't be naive to turn Europe into an immigrant continent like North America, like Australia. It's not trivial. And there is a reason why welfare, public welfare system, exists throughout Europe and does exist in immigrant society. So, I mean, it's very easy to say you just open the border, you just give up the issue, and you let everybody come and you compete directly one against another, like we do with most of the world. But it does mean loss or something, and that loss is the loss of the issue. I'm not advocating one way or another here, I'm just pointing to the fact that this is not trivial. We stop there, this is a good discussion. Thank you. Thank you. very much, Bolinigo. Uh, I think it was a very interesting and and uh, and, and uh, provocative uh, uh, lecture. We have now had like, one road to democracy. That's uh, maybe the, 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 the Danish the Danish uh, narrative. But of course, there are, as I said yesterday, there are other ways roads to to, to democracy. <laughs> Thank you.